guys what is up welcome back to the channel i am sam if you're new thank you so much for stopping by today we're going to be um doing some plant maintenance i actually did a few things i've been doing a lot of things plant related plant maintenance type things repotting uh, over the last month or so really since spring kind of came into fruition finally but I have several plants that need repotted and then I have other plants that need um, some support poles uh, so I have a couple different moss poles like pre-made and bamboo stakes so I'm gonna be repotting and giving some of these plants support poles watering I just have a lot of stuff that I really need to get done so I thought I'd bring y'all along with me I don't know we're, we're just gonna chit chat and get some plant chores done so let's go ahead and get right on into it basically I have a bunch of plants setting here that need repotted I actually have a couple of new plants that I'm gonna be repotting as well I have moss poles I have these four foot bamboo stakes and then I have a couple smaller options for the smaller guys I have all different types of pots, velcro tape, scissors, all of the goods. Um, I guess first I'm going to show you guys some of the new pots that I picked up. I went out to Marshall's uh, a couple of days ago, just specifically looking for new planters, cute planters. So the first one that I got is this, what is it, probably an 8 inch, 6 or 8 inch planter. It is terracotta and has these little painted spots on it. It's really, really cute. Uh, Marshalls is great guys. I used to go to TJ Maxx where we live now. We don't have TJ Maxx, but we do have Marshalls. You can get some really great stuff there for a really great price, especially planters. This does have drainage. Very cute. I believe this was $7.99. I also got this glaze ceramic planter. This also has drainage. This was $7.99 as well. Oh, I love this one. Look how cute this is. Little face planter. This is the only one that does not have a drainage hole. Uh, so I think I'm going to be actually putting the plant in this little clear orchid pot and then down in this as a cash po. Pretty sure I'm going to put this guy in here. This is a new plant for me. This is from NSE Tropicals and it is a beautiful philodendron silver sword. This is going to be one that's getting a pole. I got this ceramic planter for $5.99. I also got this one for $5.99 with the little hearts on it. It also has drainage. I got this from Walmart, I believe, for like, I think it was like $2.99 or something like that. Pastel pink. It's very cute. And then I have a couple other planters that I have had that I just kind of have chilling here in case I need them. So let's go ahead and get started. I need to move some of these plants down. I'm going to be repotting this uh, philodendron bipinifolium aurea and giving him a support pole. And I'm only repotting him because the pole is going to be too big for this planter, I believe. He doesn't actually need repotted himself. I'm going to be repotting my Mon Albo Monstera. It's actually working on a new leaf. Can you guys see that? And look at this crazy aerial root. It was actually sticking in my Birkin pot and had buried itself down in the cocoa core that that's planted in. But he does have some roots coming out the bottom and I don't love this planter. I think this is a beautiful plant and he just needs something a little bit more cute. He needs something with a little bit more personality. And then this is also a new plant, guys. This is a philodendron giganteum. He actually had a white fly come off of him whenever I opened him. So I've treated him and he's been in quarantine for the last couple of weeks. But um, now I need to go ahead and repot him and get him out of the soil because I don't know if there's anything icky living in it. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and repot this philodendron silver sword first and get this baby its moss pole or support pole put in. I got my soil bin here and I'm just gonna set the pots down in here and kind of do it that way. I feel like that's just easier and maybe we'll make less of a mess. So I thought we could do a little bit of chit chatting. What pole should we put in here? I don't really know what I'm doing. Ooh. This pot's actually not really big enough. It's not even big enough. Are you cereal? You know what? I think that this guy might be okay because that pot's just not big enough. If I put him down in here, 
even though there's no drainage I think he might be okay as long as I go really easy on the watering because this soil is very very uh, airy and well draining so I'm gonna try it and just hope that I don't end up giving him root rot girl cross your fingers for me So here's the beautiful philodendron silver sword oh doesn't it look so nice in this planter I think the blue pot with this silvery blue hue on the leaves like it's just so nice it looks good with that pole too so yay I love him in here it's so cute okay I think I'm gonna go ahead and pot up this is my philodendron plowmanii that's grown back from a little node basically a little stick first leaf it gave me second leaf which is insanely beautiful and then here's her third leaf she's currently unfurling it's still in moss where I've rooted it in moss and I think it's time to go ahead and put it in some soil so I think I'm gonna put her in this really adorable little white heart planter oh yeah look at those roots you guys look can you guys see all of those pink roots that's so nice they look so good so I'm not gonna worry so much about um, getting all of the moss off because I don't want to disrupt the roots too much and I had a couple of you guys leave me comments in a video where I was talking about removing moss from the roots and how challenging it can be at times depending how long you've left that plant in the moss and I had a couple people tell me like you know it's not that big of a deal to leave the moss on the root ball like remove what's kind of free and what you're able to easily remove and as for the rest just let it be it will eventually decompose in the soil so I guess I was always just kind of afraid of the roots rotting if I put moss covered roots in soil but my soil mix it like I said it's really well draining so I, it really shouldn't be an issue as long as I'm not over watering I mean those roots look so nice they're so pretty and pink I love pink philodendron roots, you guys. They're just so satisfying to see. I really don't want to damage these roots, these brand new roots that I've spent months growing. So you guys, look at this. This is my Syngonium rei, and it was living in a humidity box with perlite in the bottom. Check it out. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that the perlite definitely does encourage root growth. It definitely helps with growing roots. That's just insane to me. So I need to repot that plant as well. I'm gonna take him out of the humidity box. I don't, I don't really think it's necessary for that plant anymore. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit of soil in the bottom of the planter because this, uh, this root ball is not that much smaller than the pot. So don't have a ton of room to work with. This babe doesn't really need a support pole just yet, but isn't she gorgeous? Oh, she looks nice in this planter also. Just loving these new planters. I've really been on a kick lately with purchasing new planters um, and cute ones. Like I'm just kind of tired of the same old same Walmart planters and terracotta. Like I love a good terracotta, don't get me wrong, but I might have to cut this pot off guys I think I'm going to I'm not gonna risk ripping all of those roots off so I'm gonna take my scissors here and just carefully it's just a little plastic planter so it's not like I'm not that upset about destroying it I guess but yeah um you know I have tons of planters from Walmart and terracotta I don't know I've just really been interested in getting some new cute like one not necessarily one of a kind but pots that I don't see every single time I go into a big box store you know uh, it feels like every time I go to Lowe's or Walmart it's the same exact pot selection every now and then they'll get a new design or two in I'm really into putting plants that I love in pots that I love unique pots you know ones that I don't have more than one of especially whenever you can find them at a discount price it's just like icing on the cake even like the the your standard pots that you find at big box stores a lot of the times are seriously overpriced like it's a little bit ridiculous okay so 
I'm either going to put the Syngonium Rei in this pot or this pot. This one's super strange. Oh, but that's actually kind of cute. This is the smallest plant that I have right now that I'm repotting. And no other plant is going to fit in this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use this little guy. It's cute anyway. So I had an Oxalis living in this for the longest time and then killed it. Basically, I gave up on it. going in here that root ball is actually not that big interesting hmm it's not nearly as big as I thought but in order to get a moss pole down in there I think instead of a moss pole I'm going to use this bamboo stake perhaps I just don't want to put it in too big of a pot that actually looks quite nice maybe I should do that okay let's try it easy enough yeah oh, that looks nice I like I like the way that turned out okay Doesn't that look good? I actually love him in this planter. Um, I love the way that turned out. Okay, so now that I have this, and I don't really have another planter big enough, I think I'm gonna put this Gigantium in this planter, so long as his root ball isn't too big. That shouldn't be a problem. Mm, it's in a very dense potting medium. Looks like there's some sand. In, that, in there as well and there's like no perlite at all yeah not a huge fan of this potting medium the roots aren't that healthy either uh, if I'm being honest they look like they're potentially on the verge of root rot like maybe one more good watering and we would have some rot issues yeah so oh that fits lovely yes Sir, that is nice. I'm loving these plant pot combos, guys. beautiful all right now let's go ahead into the bathroom and water these guys in Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of my begonias. So I discovered spider mites in my bedroom with a, on a few of my plants like my Thai constellation. I'm so sad about it. But um, and then these guys. So I have mixed up 
uh, some alcohol and soap and a spray bottle and that's what I'm using to treat my plants but this is my begonia luxuriums not sure what happened here but this lives in a begonia bubble like beside the plants that were infected with spider mite so i did pull it out and kind of shine my flashlight on the leaves trying to see if i could find any pests or webbing or anything like that because i was noticing that it had a few crispy bits here and there and a few of the leaves were completely crisped up which i already removed I actually did not see any pest whatsoever, so I'm not really sure why the crisping is happening. It should be getting adequate humidity, but regardless, there are quite a few new leaves coming in. They're so cute whenever they first start to come in. I love how Begonia Luxurians leaves are super red when they come in also. It's just such a beautiful and interesting begonia. I think I am going to wipe out the inside of the begonia bubbles really well. I'm also taking all of these plants out and spraying them down and I'm going to wipe off this stand and the wall and everything around these plants just to be sure that we completely get rid of the mites. I don't want them spreading anywhere else. So here's my little mixture. Like I said, it's just uh, rubbing alcohol, water, and dish soap. Works every single time. So this is my begonia Alicia Fay. I did mistakenly let her dry out a little bit too long. The thing is, <laughs> she's wilted a couple of her leaves and I need to remove them. Only a couple, luckily, are going to be lost. I do like to go ahead and remove leaves on my begonias, especially whenever they start to dry up and decay because it's only a matter of time and that can cause like fungus and other stuff to become present if you don't remove the old leaves and they like drop and set in the pot. It's just not great for the plant health in general. So, oh my goodness, look at all of her new leaves coming in though. Absolutely beautiful. I love her so much and she does live in a begonia bubble so I don't really have to water too much. Um, but anyways, I think I am going to, instead of removing the leaf or leaves and just throwing them away, since they are still relatively healthy and alive, I think that I am just going to um like this one i'm going to remove that and instead of throwing it away i'm going to put it down in the moss of this little terrarium situation that i have going on here where i have a couple of my other little begonias growing i think i'm just going to stick it down in like that the roots will shoot out of this part right here if it's going to root they don't always root up sometimes they just shrivel up and die okay so the parts of the leaf that looked a little bit icky i went ahead and removed because i don't want it to develop any type of bacteria or powdery mildew or anything like that so i did remove the disgusting parts of the leaf and we're just going to put it down in like this i think i need to get a little bit more moss probably and stick down in there over top of the leaf mm -hmm. This one is a little limp, but I don't know. I think it'll be okay. It's not really crisping or anything like that. There are a couple, like, dead pieces like that that I need to get out and throw away. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. Um, I think that's probably the only leaf for now. I'm going to keep an eye on this plant, and if it starts to, like, crisp up any of these other bottom leaves here, then I will go ahead and remove them and probably place them down in the moss as well so I have more of a chance of getting one to root, but... Look at that little tiny baby begonia red planet. Oh my gosh, adorable. Ta-da! This begonia I don't think is going to come back. This was, I can't remember, it's like begonia U... I don't remember. It starts with an e, a U. Um, I don't think it's going to come back though. I think it's gone. I should probably throw it away, but I have a really hard time giving up on these begonias whenever... Uh, and they lose all their leaves because I feel like maybe just maybe they'll grow back sometimes they do but if it's been like a year and nothing it's probably not going to do anything right okay sometimes I keep this covered but where it's so wet in there I'm not going to cover it right now so there this bottom shelf gets some really good um, sunlight and here we have my begonia chlorosticta green form and her new leaf right there and then what is going on with that anthurium? <sighs> Guys, it looks like there's something funky going on with this anthurium bilinoarium in here. Oh, I'm gonna have to remove those leaves. What is that? I'm gonna remove those leaves and I think I'm gonna spray a fungicide in here um, just to be on the safe side. Those newer leaves look pretty good, but those older leaves, that's a little bit concerning. Hmm. 
Let me get my fungicide and we're gonna remove those leaves and give a little spray in here and probably leave the top off for a couple days to let it ventilate and get some airflow down in there. Check out this second little baby chloristicta over here by this brandy. There's an entirely new plant, chloristicta plant growing in right there. It's either off the base of the stem or there's an, a leaf down in there that rooted up and is producing a new plant. But yeah, there's a second chloristicta baby growing in and that wasn't on purpose. It, I didn't intentionally try to grow that or anything, so I think that's pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna try to hold the camera while I do this. Okay, I think it's just got too wet in there. Um, it's it's very moist. Oh, let's see. Ew, yeah. Excuse my grungy nails, but do you see that? That doesn't look good. Um, so definitely want to remove these leaves, wash my hands afterwards, and not touch any other plants if I can help it. But there's the newest leaf, that largest one right there on the Violinorium. Everything else in here looks fine to me. I don't see any signs of bacterial issues. Otherwise, it's just really, really moist and wet in there. So I am going to take my copper fungicide and I'm going to spray this plant just to be safe. I'm going to spray the moss around it and I'm going to kind of um, spray everything else in there as well just in case, you know. Spray the chloristicta. Okay and I'm going to leave the top off to let this ventilate and you know get some airflow down in there and kind of dry out a little bit because it's just entirely entirely too wet and damp in this jar for these plants which they're obviously loving it I mean they're thriving but we just really don't want any bacteria or blight or anything like that occurring so that brandy looks phenomenal I mean that looks so beautiful wow this is the only way I can keep my brandies happy is to keep them in an enclosed space and they absolutely love it okay guys this is our new baby kitty and we initially named her Cleo but I don't know my husband really likes the name Bendy, but I was like, no, let's name her Cleo. And now I'm kind of like, Bendy would be really cute. Cleo's just not really sticking. I don't know. So we may end up changing her name to Bendy. She doesn't really know what the heck her name is just yet, but isn't she the cutest? She's so ornery. So ornery, so adventurous, so curious. She's a sweetheart though. Oh, <laughs> got this little begonia here. This is new, new-ish. Um, this is the ID, Begonia Chayo, or Cayo, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but C-H-A-Y-O. It's the cutest little thing, pink and silver, and it's just a little baby. This is what it was shipped to me in. I think I'm going to move this little baby over into a Begonia bubble. I actually think I'm going to just leave it in this plastic container, this plastic cup. Uh, it should be fine, right? So I don't think it needs a water or anything. I think it should be good like this. So I'm just going to stick it down on the perlite like so and keep an eye on it. As far as I know, this is a terrarium begonia. So it should do well in here, hopefully. My begonia bubbles are so dirty. The lighting is not great. Okay, it's nighttime. I have my flash on though, so hopefully you can see a little bit, maybe. But this is my Anthurium Vici. It's a little plug. Uh, it, it came to me like this a few months ago in this little plug. And I noticed as I was watering it that it just... It, the soil would get wet, but the plug was not getting wet. And the leaves are starting to turn chlorotic. So I'm a little bit concerned. So I decided to pull it out of the soil and try to remove the soil that's around the roots, like the little plug. Um, so maybe the roots can better find their way through the soil and get hydrated whenever I water So I'm just soaking it in a bowl of like lukewarm water at the moment trying to loosen up that very compact and very dense Soil here's where we're at now I'm gonna put it back in the water and let it set for I don't know a little bit longer and then come back to it And then we're gonna put it up and I just really hope this solves the issue and I don't lose the rest of the leaves Hello guys, it is the next day. If you hear little ones, we have one eating her breakfast and Camilla's in her room playing. Corbin's at his nanny's. I let this Anthurium Vici plug soak in water for a bit last night until I was able to remove the soil. 
Now here's what came off of it. The perlite you see, that's just from the soil mix it was in, little bits that were attached. The plug was sticking up just a, just a little bit on the top of the soil here. I would notice when I watered the plug, the soil would get moist, but the plug itself and the soil within the plug was not getting moist. It still felt very compact and very dry. So, I mean, I'm not sure if that's why this plant was starting to turn a bit chlorotic. I didn't see any bugs on it, but I did go ahead and wash it down really well under the water. I just kind of feel like maybe the roots weren't getting hydrated whenever I was watering this plant. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully the roots can start making their way through the soil now and growing. But um, I'm going to go ahead and pot this therium back up. Okay, y'all, let's sweater some plants. going to water this hanging syngonium and um, this is my little variegated jade isn't it so cute I was looking for one of these for the longest time I finally found one a while back it's adorable I love it I'm gonna put these guys back in their place okay guys so it's been a couple days and I thought I would show y'all what I ended up doing in this little area in my bedroom I ended up swapping a bunch of plants out from here first of all I treated all of them for spider mites and I've been doing a lot of plant work that I just haven't filmed because I just haven't been able to, honestly. But this is my big philodendron bipinifolium. I ended up having to give him a larger stake because as you can see, he completely outgrew the moss pole. And there's two, two stems in here, two vines, but I just I had to find a place um, for him because he's so tall, he doesn't fit on any of my shelves, obviously. So. I thought why not put him here and then I also have my Aurea, Bipinifolium Aurea, on the other end so the goal is to have both of my Bipinifoliums climbing up this wall right here like yeah I really think that's gonna look nice and then I also moved this little maculata over here I have I, I moved several of my begonias over here basically because they do really well under these grow lights under the purple lights and they don't really need this much sunlight honestly I think it was kind of maybe a little bit too much for my begonias and they also really like humidity so what better spot than over here by the humidifier so I have this little begonia here as well this is what are you I think this is begonia Medora and then here just kind of chilling we have syngonium urethophyllum i think is how you say it this is this was here this and this syngonium was already over here this is my philodendron thematophyllum looking beautiful with that new leaf okay and then we have my special angel begonia right here and then we have um and theory or shoot Alocasia black velvet right here looking super cute and that's pretty much it and then over here you know we've got my begonia bubbles and my stromanth trio star philip these are his two two newest leaves which are absolutely adorable and these guys so yeah i just want to show y'all a little update of this area since i did swab out the plants so what do you guys think